Welcome to Creating with Victoria. Be sure to click the bell icon to be notified when I upload videos. Today we're going to be doing a mixed media art journal page with a sunken boat focal point. Hi, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I'm using matte media and I'm going to go ahead and just apply that all over the page. I'll be putting some other elements on top of this, and so this is a great base to work with in your art journal. I just want to give it a good coat. All right, here we're gonna add some tissue and I used some of the Tim Holtz tissue, just the word parts of it. So I pulled that off of my um, roll that I have, one of those large rolls that were the first issue of tissue. So I still have quite a bit of that to work with. And I like to, always like to add words in the background. I feel like it adds a little bit of texture and depth. And some of you might uh, like to do that too but whatever you like in the background for texture is just great on your art journal pages you just need to be confident and do whatever works for you the best making sure this is down with some more matte medium making sure it's down really well and doesn't have a whole lot of bubbles although bubbles are okay too with this project we're heading for a background that looks like water and so there's really no wrong water look is there it can be whatever colors water is in your region or whatever your ideal water is it can all look like that so we're going to go ahead and just finish that up and dry it off I'm learning a lot about doing recording. I'm learning that I need to have my camera over on the other side. I didn't realize how much I use my left hand when I'm working. So I'll be working on that for the next video. All right, so this is nice and dry to work with right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some antique white paint. And I'm gonna just cover that page up with the white. And I remember when I first did this, I kind of freaked out because I thought, oh my gosh, I have that beautiful tissue on the back and it's not going to show. Well, I do like the look of having it be more in the background and using white over the top or antique white or even some other colors knocks that uh, lettering back a little bit so that you don't see it as predominantly. It doesn't overtake your page. I just want to ask all you guys a question. Do you guys ever drop stuff while you're crafting? I always am so envious of people that make videos and they always look like they're, it's the most smooth and they've got it all together and, and everything. And my craft room is just a little bit more cluttered up, I think, than some. And I'm also not the most coordinated person. So every once in a while I'll drop something. And I keep thinking I'm going to catch that on film and that's going to be super embarrassing. But anyway, here I'm going over the whole page again with just a little bit more to make sure it's knocked back as much as I want. All right, it's nice and dry now. So we'll go ahead with adding some color to the page. And I wanted to really get a blue ocean look. And so I used some Tim Holtz inks, uh, two distress inks and a distress oxide. The inks were faded uh, denim and um, the sapphire color, chip sapphire, I think. And the oxide is the new speckled egg color. At least I think it's the newest color right now. And so this is where you can see a little of my uh, indecision about what I was going to do. 
Originally, I thought I was going to just apply with a sponge and onto the page. And then I decided to use the glass that I use. This is just from a photo frame. And um, if you do decide to do this, be super careful. Um, it can break really easily. And I speak from experience on that. And probably not the best idea if you have little kids around. Um, I have an older son, and so he doesn't come into my craft room very much. So I can use a piece of glass as a stamp and get some of that color onto the page. And I apologize for not being quite on center. I'm still learning about all of that too. So I think the next video will get better with that. So I'm just gonna add different colors here. Um, I did use a brush. I used the stamping technique from the glass. And then you'll see me also using um, a makeup sponge towards the end here to add some final color. And I was just looking for a really beautiful blue background. And so um, I wanted some pretty good coverage on this. Some of you might stop earlier with your colors, and that's A-OK -okay too. You can do whatever works for you. Uh, you know, certainly the way I do it is not the only way. It's probably not even the best way. It's not even close to that. <laughs> um, definitely, I'm a self-trained crafter, so... Um, thus those dropping things from time to time and you know just be yourself and do it how you want i like the dark colors here for the ocean as well spritzing it with water and i'm going to move it around a little on the glass so it stamps and um you know you can the cool thing about art journaling is you know it's really mostly just for you we don't actually have to show all of our art journal pages. It's not like we're going to a juried art show or something. So it's a great place to try something and to see if it works and see if you like it. And if you do, great. If you don't, the cool thing about art journals is they have multiple pages and you can just flip over to the next page and try again. So here I'm just stamping that uh, chip sapphire onto the page. And I, again, I'm just using that piece of glass that I use. Um, I just find it a good, a good way to transfer a lot of color at a time for me. So at each step, I'm gonna get this dry. And so while it's drying, I'll just let you listen to some music. Oh my gosh, you can also hear I have a dog, huh? <laughs> oh well. Yep, imperfections of videos. All right, well again, just spritzing a little bit more water on that page and uh, gonna put it down as a final stamp here. I wanna get all that color off that I could. And this, we could have easily just stopped right here. This makes, looks like a nice ocean background too, but I wanted to add and introduce the um, speckled egg into it too, to just give a little more coverage. Because I wanted that lighter, more oxidized look too, to add a little texture in. So just finish drying this up and we'll add the next color. And I really am liking the oxides, how they bring that, that pigment up to the top and get it moved around here on the glass again. And I'm going to do the stamping technique I showed you one more time. One thing I like about playing in art journals is, you know, especially if you're using these um, techniques where you're layering colors, you know, you can just go as long as you want. And sometimes I think um, 
I know for me, I overdo it a little bit, but it's almost always recoverable, which is super cool. All right, so I also decided I wanted a little bit more of the chip sapphire in there. Now I'm taking the makeup sponge, which I like to use because I certainly uh, don't feel like it's uh, such a problem. They're, they're easily disposable and help me not get so much ink on my fingers. And I'm just using that all over with the chip sapphire in some of the places that were a little lighter. You can see I really like um, my backgrounds to get a good coverage of color. It doesn't really matter uh, to me so much that it's uniform, but I just like to have most of it covered. And some of you might prefer your oceans to have more white, and that's cool too. All right, so here's where we're going to go into um, the technique that I haven't used for a long time. And that is um, taking some of the coarse Mediterranean sea salt and sprinkling that on our page. I like to put it in my hand first and just use a couple fingers and sprinkle it around because that gives me a bit more control personally. But I always forget about this technique and it's pretty cool. You have to have patience and let your salt dry. Um, and if you haven't done this since you were a kid, you probably still remember that the salt attracts the ink and pulls it back up when you put it onto wet ink. And it really gives this kind of lovely textured and mottled look. And you just need to let it dry. And here it is dry. I'm just brushing it off. Be really gentle as you do this because um, you know you don't want to damage your paper. And so you can just see that salt coming off with the colors. And I just think that looks super cool. And it gave me a little bit more of a model -y background than I ended up with just with the inks. So it's also a little bit of a way to correct that if you have a little bit too much solid or more than you prefer. So I'll just brush off all the salt here and we'll go to the next step. All right, and I apologize here. I missed a little bit of recording. My camera didn't work. But what I've done um, before we're getting to the step we're at is I painted a sand color down at the bottom. After adhering this ship there, that's a sunken ship. And then I also added some texture with white gelatos through a dotted uh, stencil. And so now I've mixed uh, hydrangea pink and pumpkin because I didn't have a good color, coral color. And so I just made this coral and I'm applying it with a brush. And I'm just going for a thicker kind of corally look down here. And then you'll see I also um, sort of didn't want to continue with such thick predominant coral. And so I switched over um, to using an old bank card. And um, I'll move over to that to apply some more. Right, so here I had tried, or starting to try to use the long end of that. And I looked at that and decided that I didn't want to cover as much of my sunken ship. So ultimately here, um, I'm going to switch to the shorter side of the card, which gave me a little bit more control. And this is where I don't know about the rest of you, but I get paint and inks all over my hand. I always love watching Tim Holtz and Mike Deacon. They always have such nice clean hands. And um, as I said, I'm, you know, more... <laughs> Definitely not formally taught and somewhat messier in my approach, I think. And I always end up with paint and ink all over the place. But I really liked um, how using the card, the control it gave me, and just to be able to get um, some more abstract looking coral. So I'm going to add that all over the page. Here down at the bottom, um, 
my focal point is a picture of a sunken ship and I actually just took um, a photo that I had um, of a ship that was sort of stranded on uh, the shore and used that and, and cut around it and then made it look like it's down in the ocean depths here. So just going to finish up the coral here. And so I did this uh, art journal page for the uh, July Mission Inspiration at Mike Deacon Art and then um, also for my Dew Drops project. So here you can see I'm spritzing with white. It's an opaque white mist, mister of acrylic ink that I have. It's um, a product that's not available on the market, but you could do this by uh, mixing acrylic paint um, very thinly, and you could either use a splatter brush technique or put it into a spritzer, being sure to clean the tip each time you use it. Um, this just gives me a little extra kind of bubbly ocean technique <laughs> or look. And I liked it. I was a little bit freaked out at first because my control with the spritzer wasn't quite as good as I was hoping. So it ended up being uh, more predominant than I wanted. Than I wanted. And you can see I'll take um, paper towels and just daub off what's extra. And then when you dry this opaque paint, it tends to um, become a little bit more translucent and pick up the color of the back of the page. And I printed the sentiment out on a colored people, piece of cardstock. And I'm just going to use um, some liquid adhesive and place that on the page. And you can see I actually used a two sided piece of cardstock that I had. Um, I think it was from Glitz Paper. So um, during this time of pandemic, I've been working through a lot of my older supplies and trying to use them in new and creative ways. So I like using liquid adhesive when I put sentiments down because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room and um, I don't have to be so decisive when I first place it down. All right, so now I'm going to add the dew drops and I used the water colored dew drops so they're actually a very light blue and it, the mix also has darker blue and clear and what I want to achieve right here is by adding these is just to give a little of a mysterious bubbly thing that's coming up from behind um, the focal point of the ship and just to give a little mystery of something hidden back there that is getting some, creating some bubbles. So this is a fun way to do this. And it adds a little dimension to your page. And I don't really mind that in my art journals. They end up being a little bit bulky at the end anyway. So it's really great. And again, I'm just using a liquid adhesive. And I do use a wax tip. A stylus to put them on and um, it's the same kind of thing that you use to do your nails and so put those little decorative pieces on your nails and you can also move those around on the liquid adhesive using your fingers just like I did there and just kind of making it where I want it to be Finally, I'm going to sign my piece, and then it'll be all prepared. So I'm marking it Mission Inspiration for July, and the colors were sand, coral, and ocean blue, and so I sort of used ocean blues, and then using those watercolored dewdrops to really add the final accents to the page. So here's how the page looks close up, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.